Hi, I'm Mike from Jumpfly. And I'm Brad from Jumpfly. Welcome. Today we're going to talk about Google AdWords and the campaign settings for success. Really, the campaign settings are pretty crucial when you're starting off a Google AdWords account. If you're new to Google AdWords and you're not familiar with this, it, it can really save you. If you're familiar with Google AdWords, you might as well move on to the next video. Campaign settings are really basic, but really important. Critical. A lot of the default settings may not be what you anticipate and can be incredibly dangerous if not modified and monitored. So just for that, we're going to go through each and every one of them for you so you don't make a mistake uh, right away. Let's talk about, first of all, the basic settings. Um, Brett? All right, the first setting you'll see when you go to the campaign settings is the campaign name. Very simple, name it something. Uh, naming everything logically will help save you time and energy and effort later. So take the time and do it right now. Give yourself a name. Also there you'll see the start date and a will run until date. Start date is standard default stuff that we do not change. It will run a date till. We'll just leave that alone. There's no reason to mess with that. Uh, in most cases there's not unless you get into advanced settings and by that point you'll really understand these settings better to, to really care about the end date. Um, but let's move on to budget options where that's a really important one. That first basic settings, we really don't mess with that except for the campaign name again like Brad said, just so they're not enabled one, two, three, and four and you can see what you're, what you're looking at from the campaign screen. You can see how much you're spending in each individual campaign. But the budget options, that's really, really important here. The budget options is what's determining how much you're willing to spend each and every day. Uh, this tool can be very valuable, it can limit what you spend on a daily basis, but it can also be very dangerous if misused or misunderstood. Uh, one common thing we've seen people do is come to us and they're maxing out their budget, meaning say they have a $20 a day budget and they're reaching it, and they then don't see their ad. They then think they should increase their bid to try to find their ad, but what that does is actually make their show up less frequently. So it's a very critical tool to understand. If you're maximizing your budget and you're hitting your budget every day of $20, what Google then does is show your ad intermittently to avoid going over your budget. Absolutely. And if you do go over your budget, that means you're paying too much for every individual click if you have a fixed budget. Meaning that if you have a fixed budget of, let's say, $3,000 a month, if you pay less on an average per click, regardless of position, you achieve more clicks by the end of the month, as long as you can still achieve traffic. And that's the whole key. Many people think they have to be in the first, second, and third position and pay up to three to five to ten times more money for some of the lower positions. And what happens is that you earn less traffic in the long run if you have a fixed budget. So be very careful with budget. Also, without looking at budget, you can spend whatever Google thinks you can spend. And many people find a lot of money spent in that first day because of misappropriated campaign settings. And that can save you from setting that up front. Again, I do want to just hit that again make it clear, and yeah, we've already did it twice, but the budget is critical. If you're maxing out your budget and increasing your bids, you're making your ads show up even less, and you're unnecessarily paying too much per click. So remember, if you're maxing out your budget, you might want to consider reducing bids, not necessarily increasing bids. Absolutely. If you're maxing out your budget, two things to do. One, increase your budget. If you're not willing to do that, decrease your bids. Then visit your ad copy. Whole other subject, we'll approach another time. Absolutely. Uh, the third uh, campaign setting on here is networks and bidding. Um, this is two different things. Normally, we don't mess with the bidding preferences at all. Um, on there, there's a, a mark called position preferences. That's a ballgame that we normally don't get into. Google messes with a lot of things in position preferences, and it takes a lot of control away from the account manager. So we like to tend to manage our bids on our own. Um, the important part here, though, is the networks, and that's where your ads will show up. Uh, so yeah, at Google, you may or may not realize, initially, I think, the default setting is for search partners to be on and the content Absolutely. network to be on. I'll first mention that search partners, Google has had incredible results for our clients and has had their, the search partners have as well. However, it is important to understand that the search partners generate almost, I think, 35 to 45% of the traffic for Google AdWords, which a lot of people might not realize, and you have the option of turning that off. Um, a lot of research that we've done and the clients that we've monitored has indicated that the results from the partners may be a little less um, lower conversion rate, uh, a little less it, successful and beneficial than the 
traffic directly coming from Google. Absolutely. And, and looking at the partners, if you're just starting out with an AdWords campaign again, you're just learning about how AdWords is controlled, you're just starting out with a smaller daily budget and you don't want to lose, you're trying to learn, start with Google search only. Turn off content, turn off the search partners, that way you're only focusing on those people searching at Google.com. Uh, the others are uh, ways to get additional business once you find success. Once you have success, whole nother ball game. Again, this video probably isn't for you if you're successful. So you touched on the search network partners, very important potentially and even more important is that content network setting, which again is defaulted to the on position. Absolutely. Uh, content can be successful and, and great for clients, but it needs to be reviewed and monitored. Again, you're starting out with the same bids on content as search if you don't touch that, and that can frequently lead to spending a, a good percentage of your budget on content initially instead of search, which is not necessarily the best place to begin with. If you have success with search, content is a great place to extend your efforts, but not necessarily the best place to initially spend the majority of your budget. Absolutely. If you're buying ads to be on the right-hand side of Google.com and that's what you think you're buying, that is not the content network. The content network is about a different sort of advertising that Google offers to plaster your internet ads around all different websites while people are reading and enjoying and surfing the internet. It's a different ball game. Again, it can be extremely successful for the right clients if managed properly, but if you're just starting out with a fixed budget, please turn it off. Uh, get to know that, if, again, if you're reading or watching this video and learning about the campaign settings and you're trying to learn about how to set up your first Google campaign, contact off. Agreed. All right. Scheduling and serving, um, this is pretty simple. Most people don't want to schedule their ads at any certain time of day. If people are searching for what you think is important to your business, why wouldn't you want to show them your ad unless you have a call center? Right, there, there are time. specific examples where it might be beneficial if you did want to be off for a weekend or something for a particular reason, but generally it's something we steer clear from. But yeah, if someone's searching for your product or service, It'll let them find you no matter when they're searching. Absolutely. And um, ad serving is about your ad copy and if you have multiple ads, whether or not you want to show the, the one with the highest click-through rate or you want to rotate your ads evenly, which means that for if somebody searches for a term at google.com that represents your business, your ad copy shows up there on the right-hand side of the page. You can write more than one ad to show up for that same term and then track the results of that. This has to do with that. For now, the default setting of Optimize is probably the best and again, uh, neither one of the, the settings in scheduling and serving is real important. I would leave those right where they're at. Um, yeah, it's a great, great and useful for later, for once you're more involved and deeper into managing your account. Absolutely. And, and the bottom here, you're looking at the target audience. Um, the target audience is crucial. Um, again, to go over what's crucial on here, the things you need to set up are the budget, the target audience, and then turn everything off but Google search in the middle. That's how you start these campaigns. That's it in a nutshell. The target audience is all about you. Who do you want to target? Yeah, it goes into language there, which in general for our tech businesses we serve, we stick to English. Uh, there is potential overseas, but we've seen some questionable results. And then do you want to explore that further or go into locations? Well, no, language is, you know, it, it, again, starting off with the basics, language is English. You're just starting off if you're here in the U.S. or, it, you know, I guess. I mean, Google does offer that. over currently over 40 languages, so there may be some value there. I, I have not seen enough tra traffic generated from it to make it worthy from accounts where I've set up global campaigns separated from U.S. campaigns, but the potential is there and it's expanding. But yeah, for absolutely. beginners, again, uh, not something to be, I mean, target the language you're English. looking to target. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and location, again, you really want to target the locations that you're looking to target. If you have a very limited budget and you can serve the country in a big marketplace, you might want to target a specific location just to dabble and try. It can narrow your scope and allow your ads to show more consistently throughout the day in a targeted location. The other time you want to try a targeted location is when? Yeah, when you're a local business. So if you're <laughs> a plumber and you want to target a 30 mile radius of where your actual facility is, this is an incredibly powerful tool that needs to be used properly. It enables a plumber to bid on general terms like plumber and plumbing, where you wouldn't want to do that nationally but I'll take those terms and a real local target right around my office. Absolutely. What that, the, the target audience is, they're targeting the location that your people are searching from. So if, like Brad said, somebody searches for a plumber and you are a Virginia plumber, your ads won't show to people searching for that in California. It'll only show to those searching in Virginia. 
and that's extremely important to those that are just starting out those campaigns because you wouldn't believe the amount of wasted money spent for people spending money outside of the region that they're targeting.